In this presentation, we will be covering the health and safety in sports turf. In particular, we will be covering the mowing aspect, but this does carry across to everything within sports turf. So anything from being in the mess room to carrying boxes around and using any sort of chemicals and anything in between. Health and safety in sports turf. Today we will be discussing the critical topic of health and safety within sports turf. And again, in particular, uh, we'll sort of base this around mowing of turf. By the end of this presentation, you should be able to understand the importance of health and safety in turf maintenance, know how to use machinery and equipment safely, and comply with the organizational requirements and legislation. You should be able to take ownership of your work whilst prioritising safety in the workplace. So the learning objectives for today, we want to understand the importance of health and safety within sports turf. We want to know how to use machinery and equipment safely. We want to comply with all of our organisational and legal requirements and legislations and we want you to take ownership of your work that includes ensuring that you've carried out the re relevant checks and also done the correct paperwork. So first of all the legal framework so in the United Kingdom the Health and Safety at Work Act is a crucial piece of legislation that governs the workplace safety. Now this is not just for the workplace, this is for you, this is for potential visitors, this is for potential customers as well. Uh, the responsibilities of this, the Act outlines the responsibilities of both the employees and the employers to ensure there is a safe working environment. Now obviously the consequences of this uh, are non-compliance, which can result in legal actions and severe penalties. But also, if these health and safety measures are not followed, there is a danger to life and potential risk for injuries. So what are the main legal and regulatory requirements that govern the use of equipment and machinery? Now, this is the shortened down list, the need to knows, but there is other legislations which may come into it. So PUA 1998, which is the provision use of work. There's PUA 1998, there's Health and Safety at Work Act 1984, there's COSH, there's COSH 1994, the Manual Handling Regulations 1992, and the Environment Act 1995. So the importance of health and safety, health and safety are paramount in the turf maintenance to protect not only yourself, but also your colleagues and the public. Consider that accidents can lead to injuries, uh, lost work days and damage to your organisation's reput uh, reputation. Horton Agriculture have some of the highest injury and death rates in the world partly due to the fact that we tend to typically work with larger, bigger, more dangerous machinery, um, but also because we are slightly behind in the terms of health and safety, uh, places where old machinery is still being used, where, for example, guards weren't installed um, by the manufacturers. Uh, obviously, over time, we've become uh, more concerned over this and we've moved towards newer machines, but there still is places which may have some of the older equipment which may need upgrading to meet the compliance of today. A big part of this is personal protective equipment, which is also known as PPE. Uh, the PPE includes a wide variety of things from ear protection, eye protection, steel toe cap boots, um, the respiratory equipment. So if you're working with anything like dust or maybe you're cutting uh, dry, dusty grass, for example, it, it may be a good time to wear something like that. But this can also include work overalls, uh, work uniform, um, gloves, uh, you name it, really anything that you use to protect yourself while doing a job. The importance of PPE. Now, wearing the appropriate PPE can greatly reduce the risk of injury because if there was an, ever an issue or a situation where something did arise, you having your PPE on, for example, a hard hat, may prevent a potential injury if something's been dropped from above or has fallen from above and it hits your hard hat. Uh, whereas if you didn't have the hard hat on, you may have received an injury. 
So for Moen in particular, the PPE we should be really wearing is steel toe cap boots, ear defenders, gloves and trousers. Now, this might be slightly different for people on golf courses. You may have your bunker caps, the hard hat caps, uh, and there may be different things dependent on your employer. They might insist that you do uh, wear trousers at all times. Some employers may insist on, uh, may say that you can wear shorts during certain summer months, for example. Um, to mitigate the risk where you might have a potential heat stroke and other things. Next, we have the machinery and equipment itself. In turf mowing, you'll be able to work with various machinery, including lawnmowers, tractors, and various other cutting tools, so such as strimmers, hedge cutters. Uh, we should always inspect these before use. Um, the machinery is usually big, dangerous, um, noisy machinery. We need to ensure that we're doing the correct checks, the correct uh, pre-start checks, and also post-use of checks um, to ensure that the machine is safe for the next user. Uh, we want to check things such as loose parts or any sort of damaged components. On the maintenance side of things, regular maintenance and proper storage is essential for keeping the equipment safe and functional. Um, we'll go over this more in detail on the pre-start check um, presentation, and also there is videos that we've created online around the pre-start checks on a lawnmower with a petrol engine. So using machinery safely, guidelines for safe use of operation can include clearing the work area, removing any obstacles or debris from the mowing path to prevent any accidents, following the manufacturer's instructions, so always adhere to the manufacturer's guidelines for safe operation. These will be within the manual for the machine. It is important your employer also has a copy of the manual and you are able to see that manual. Um, this will go over everything from the machine, from setting cuts to um, any sort of potential reasons why it might not work. It should all be within the manual and then what to do if you come up to, to against an issue. And then obviously contact the supplier, you can contact uh, the various numbers that will be within the manual as well. So avoiding any risky manoeuvres, so we want to refrain from any dangerous manoeuvres such as operating equipment beyond its capabilities. A lot of ride-on machinery will come with a little bubble gauge, uh, which will tell us the angle of the slope which the mower is on. Obviously, you want to stay between the certain parameters dependent on that machine, because there's then a potential for us roll over, to roll over if we do go without outside of those parameters. We should be using safety features, um, such as uh, inbuilt safety features, such as the dead man's handles and seat belts when using ride on machinery. It's very important. And this is where it comes into our own hands because we should be making those decisions to make sure that we are doing those things. So our organisational requirements, uh, every organisation may be different, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, they may have specific rules and requirements relating to mowing. Uh, additional safety measures, uh, so some organisations may in place, um, implement extra safety measures or protocols to ensure that everyone is safe. Not every workplace is the same, not every process is the same. You might encounter, for example, um, times when it's, for example, a school where they might have different uh, procedures for you mowing, you can't mow at certain times because the children are nearby, but then uh, you might be able to do work around a um, university because of the people are older and assumed to have more competence uh, and you'd expect them to stay away from the uh, lawnmower. Obviously, this can't be assumed, but in general, that is the process. So taking ownership of safety, this is for absolutely everyone, not just the employer. Uh, it is a personal responsibility. It is vital in to maintaining a safe work environment. We should be reporting conditions. We do not hesitate to report safety concerns or near miss incidents to your supervisor. The examples of this taking ownership uh, might include identifying the correct safety hazards in your work area, such as blocked doorways, um, fuel tanks being left out, PPE not being worn. And finally, in conclusion, we've covered the importance of health and safety very briefly um, using uh, machinery, compliance with regulations and taking ownership of the safety. Um, we must reiterate this importance that 
safety is everyone's responsibility uh, not just your employer it is also you